Uh, now, uh, we're weaving in some creativity into uh, tonight's uh, uh, session. And so uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Meg Doty. Uh, and so Meg is a sensory sensitive human with high empathy, making creative outlets essential. Feeling largely unboundaried is a recurring theme in her poetry. She is currently working as a teacher aide after finishing her studies in English literature and religious studies. And she is also a Global Shapers Christchurch Hub member, which is a World Economic Forum initiative. Nareira, ho mai te paki paki, kia Meg. Kia koe te wa, Meg. Kia koe te katoa. Thank you very much for the welcome. That was lovely. I feel very lucky to be here um, and to be involved with this initiative. Um, and it's great to hear more about the um, talks that you guys have already had. Um, we can kind of see the evidence of why it's good to gather like this. Good to still be able to do it digitally, but it would be looking forward to doing that in September in person. Um, and so the conversations this evening um, are around, you know, collectively actioning change. And so the poems that I'm reading um, focus on the quality of connection between people. Um, empathy, you know, as you talked a bit about, is um, something that's um, very present <laughs> in my life. Um, and I've found to be a really important part of um, identifying issues and coming together to work on them. Um, so I've got three poems for you this evening, not too long, and they do get more hopeful as they go on, I promise. <laughs> um, so the first one here is called Prayer. I am tiring. My arms have stayed up since the heavens opened while they drown my town. My palms have been turned towards them all week. I will not bring them down. Until we are all placed in prayer this way, I will not stop. With our heads fallen back, our muscles sore from the strain and the weight of the rain from the holding of ceasing attack. It's the beginnings of the wettest winter we'll have after the warmest autumn yet. We are tilting toward a dichotomy of boiled air, wild snowscape, a binary dry and wet. And I know the bathtub dynamic of the ocean sloshing constantly to and fro, but it seems to be swinging more like the pirate ship ride from years ago, crashing and carving out of rock and forest, fine bone and stone sand. And she seems to be crumbling, fraying and splitting, all torn apart, our body, our land. I know that she has never needed us, but I think it still hurts, having your bones, your sires, tear at each other in relentless bursts of weaponry, politics, plastics and fire. And our mental health will continue to plummet. The cure for a cracked earth is to make us all feel it, to be ruptured and split in our own flesh in our death's birth. Until we are all placed in prayer this way, I will not stop with our heads fallen back, our muscles sore from the strain and the weight of the rain, from the holding of ceasing attack. I am tiring now, my arms have stayed up since the heavens opened, while they drowned my town. My palms have been turned towards them so long, but I will not bring them down. That's the first one, they do get more hopeful. <laughs> and this next one is called Beyond Relief. The headaches I have suffered for years have caught up with me. I am not allowed any more paracetamol. I am beyond relief. And it is this prophecy that has led me here, lying down under switched off fluorescent bars because my physio has established that I am light sensitive. I can feel the bed press into the softness before my skull. I am hyper aware of my cranial plates and worry for a moment that they have all been knocked out of place. The smell of mint washes over me and as she runs her fingers up my neck where I am pained and vulnerable, I feel a spinning in the room. She cradles my head in her palms and pulls gently and I am thrown back to what it is to not be able to hold up your own head, to have it held for you. My body whispers that this is the therapy before I fall back completely into the dark where I am at rest in a pool of dark water surrounded by the woods of the trees of the spirits of my mothers, where I can see that I have always been held. And their roots back me, their branches shelter me, 
and show me the many veined paths to the stars. That's that one. <laughs> My last poem um, for you uh, is Meteorology. And thank you again for having me. Meteorology. I am not hungry for the cold. It does not beckon me the way it does when I stand in Linda's Pass, all gold tussock and grey road, grey cloud, indistinguishably hard to me. There I crave the snow, the crystal, to top off the rounded but dramatic landscape, to complete the palette for the triptych of road trips in the South Island. Drama feeds me, and the thought of leaping from a moving vehicle and pelting sleet, bolting for the hills with frosted dirt under my feet, to the dismay of my friends craning from their seats to get a glimpse to catch me and reel me back in before I bound my way out into the cold is what drives me. But not today. The air is close and little breezes trick me into feeling like I am being touched all the time. And being the sensitive sense through soul that I am makes it hard to want anything else to be hungry for anything other than more of that touch. I am not moody today. There is nothing in me indistinguishably hard or gray, newly and unashamedly soft in the way that chocolate is so quick to melt. It seems almost eager to be liquid, fluid and solid no more. Every block one with the other, no boundaries or snap separation, all warm and sweet, rich and temporary, each square touching all the time, my inside no warmer than my outside, the outside just as warm as you. And I am tricked always into thinking that we are always touching too. So no, I am not hungry for the resetting, the icy drift, driving rain and sharp drop of cliffs. The idea of seeing you, of being with you, when, when I know I am not there yet, is enough for me to, today to tease with, to play. I will relish the water hitting my skin when it comes and pours but it is enough today to be here and be warm. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. And I will hand it back over.